Ladies and gentlemen, this is RPT, season number eight, episode 102. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What to do, everybody? Episode 102. It is Friday, Friday. I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, <coughs> God damn, I'm on tour. I am on tour, y'all. Uh, if this is Friday. No, it's Wednesday. It's tomorrow's episode. Okay. <laughs> it's Typo. It's Wednesday the 3rd. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, that means I'm at Irvine tonight. tonight. Irvine Improv tonight. Solid start to the show. Freedom of Speech Tour. Yes. Uh, we're going to get this train back on the track. Uh, Houston, Texas all weekend long, baby. Homecoming. November 5th through the 7th at the Houston Improv. It's going to be historic, man. I think I'm going to want to film this motherfucker. I got so many new ideas. I cannot wait. Las Vegas, Nevada, November 11th. Salt Lake City, November 18th. And that's it. That's it. We're going to double down, focus on podcasting. Uh, Chingo Chats. That's our other show. We just recorded an episode right before this. We went deep. It was good. It was great. That, that was good. We talked about a lot of stuff. Are we talking about uh, virtual coochie reality? Yeah. VCR? VCR. <laughs> Don't give away the tag, though, you know? All right. Hey, uh, I am on tour. Chingo Chats now has its very own RSS feed. That means you can go subscribe to that show on Apple and Spotify. Uh, the FJB shirts... I'm about to mail them out today. A lot of people been ordering, man, and uh, supply chain issues. Uh, black teas are very popular. I even had to make some on red teas that hopefully I'll get to take pictures for real soon. Um, that's it, man. Chingobling.com. Always peep the merch. We're going to be coming in hot with the Freedom Collection uh, towards the end of the year, hopefully in time for Christmas. Uh, support free speech and support our content. Work around the censors. Work around big tech. Sign up for the newsletter. And if you really want to hold us down, go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Keep the show going. We set a goal. Uh, we're trying to reach a thousand patrons by December 31st, mm -hmm. 2021. This is going to help us beef up production, hire some people, crank out more content. I might need another babysitter because I, I keep having kids. Um, new music, new sketches, new videos, everything, everything, everything. Um, what else, brother? Discord. We got a new Discord. It's popping. Once you join the Patreon, you can jump into the Discord if you're familiar with it. Awesome. If you're not, we have a, a little write-up for you where you can follow the links and learn about it. But it's it's private rooms. It's a private server where it's just patrons talking about anything from cultural things to funny memes and stories in the news. I had never been on Discord before, but it's a private <clears throat> chat room, which reminds me of the old school chingoblink.com days. Like, I don't know if there's a way to put a, I don't know. We don't know. There's well, well, like, what? basically, I kind of want to re revamp my website a little bit just to, you know, we got to work around big tech and censorship. But like, anyway, maybe we could put a little link on there, letting them know we got a private, like, a, like maybe put. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are <clears throat> oh, you talking about on your website? Yeah, something. So they're like, wait a minute, there's like a chat room, but I got to get this other thing. Yeah, remember I mentioned, I mean, we'll finish with the rest of the announcements, that <clears throat> there's updates where you can do a... a a pay, like a paywall, like have a membership base on Squarespace now. Like but that's what we use right now. So the idea is to, that's where people get all the content first, whether it's new singles, new songs, new videos, new everything. Uh, and then podcasts obviously live on Patreon, but other content will all be on, you know, kind of like the old school forum days. Interesting. Okay. That's a be that's going to be uh, something to discuss. So there's always a lot of stuff going on, man. I woke up early. I'm already checking like, man, who won this Virginia thing? I honestly don't even know. Like, maybe you... Do you know? It's tomorrow. Oh, it's not over yet? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I thought the shit was over already. <coughs> um, Oscar Blue Ramirez. I believe that's his last name. Oscar El Blue. Uh, he always calls into a war room pandemic. Uh, he works for a Real American News, I believe. Mm. Investigative journalist. He's out there on the ground all the time. Right now, bro, he's actually walking with the caravans. Yeah, so I reached out yesterday, and he was so, he was super down. But he did say, message me before, give me, a, give me a, like a little bit of a heads up to let me know where I'm at because I might not have signal. And I did follow up with him and the message went from blue to green. So I'm guessing he doesn't have signal maybe where he's at. So if he does reach back out, we'll try to video, if not at least phone call within the, the next hour or so, but we'll see. Yes. We, we'll, if not, it'll be on a future episode. Yeah, but he's, sure. he's literally out there. He was like, bro, these people decided to um, walk, I forget how many miles, he said, in the jungle, during a thunderstorm. He's like, now a bunch of the kids are sick. He was giving me a breakdown how many women, men, kids, you know, some stuff. I don't know if he's going to be able to say on there right. because you don't want to like be like, hey, man, these little, which one of y'all <clears throat> investigative journalists? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Colin Kaepernick has a new Netflix series. I guess it's called Colin in Black and White. Of mm -hmm. course. We're going to talk about that. 
hashtag poopy pants Biden was trending because there was a rumor that he pooped his pants. <laughs> he had an overflow in the Pañal department at the Vatican with the Pope. So you had the Pope and the poopy. We're going to talk about that. Uh, please give the show a review on iTunes. Pause the show right now real quick. Do us a little solid, man. Show some love. It don't cost you nothing, man. It don't cost you nothing to show love. So where do we begin, Robert? Uh, Chingo Chats was good, and we mentioned some of the Kaepernick stuff in there, and I kind of wanted to kick it off by showing you one of the clips that I don't think you've seen yet, because you did say that you saw the one where he was comparing the Combine to... No, I didn't watch it. Oh, you didn't watch it? I just kind of read the caption. Did you see the Carl where he was talking about Fresh Prince and the the 90s shows? No, I need to watch... Dude, Okay, let me see it. Awesome. Well, well, tell me what you think right now, just based off what you've read, (laughs) since you haven't seen anything yet. What do you expect from Colin Kaepernick's show? Exactly. That's That's why on Chingo Chats, I asked, like... Has anyone asked this cat, bro, are you a Marxist? What do you think about Karl Marx? Like, how do you, let, let me find out you are pro-communism because you sound very anti-America. You sound pretty racist. You sound very anti-white people, even though you got white parents. Um, he's an activist now. He don't t- say shit about the Uyghurs. He don't talk about forced labor camps that Na- Nike uses in their supply chain. So to me, man, he's a hypocrite. He's like race baiter. He's like a new Al Sharpton. He's a new Jesse Jackson. Getting a check out of Nike. And he always crying and complaining. So I saw the caption where he tried to compare getting drafted to the NFL. I'll play that clip second. And I'm going to play this one first. But it's funny. In the, in the Discord, Luis was a huge uh, sneakerhead. And I feel for the sneakerheads. I think sneakers are cool. But I've never like invested that kind of money in shoes. Like It's just not my thing. But he's got a room. I was like, dude, we were talking about cars and shoes. I was like, you have a Porsche GT3 worth of shoes in this motherfucking room. He loves sneakers. I really don't think I could buy another pair of Nikes anymore. That's just me. I'm not yeah. telling you not to. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you, bro. But also, shout out Hop Society sent me a link to this company called like Freedom <laughs> Industries. Oh, okay. Did you? Did I send it to you? I don't think I did. What do they sell? I got to. Sh- okay, I'm going to show okay. that to you too after you watch these clips. But their shoes look dope, right? Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but if you got fucking all that money in sneakers, do you, man? I'm not telling you to feel bad about it. No, yeah, no. I, I appreciate sneakers as well. I'll sit up here in line. And, but, you know, we need them for stage. That's my excuse. That's, right. a, that's a good excuse. Here we go. America's... Okay. All right. Hold on. Oh, Instagram, you fuck. These shows share archetypal black characters, including social outcasts who assimilate or conform, like Carlton Banks and Steve Urkel. Wow. You guys have got some real A-list people here. White people love these dudes. Everything from the way they dress, way they talk. You're our man. Even the way they dance. Way they so, dance. So, non-threatened. James Spurlock. Non-threatened. Two for, because with him you get a two for one. He's a black guy and a Harvard guy. These characters have come to be known by the term acceptable Negro. <laughs> the acceptable Negro is a black character who inhabits white characteristics. Oh, my God. He's a terrible who presenter, by the way. Feel oh, my God. Catch this. Catch this. The acceptable Negro is a white man's creation. Thing is... White people don't get to decide who's acceptable to us. Over the years, there have been some very popular TV shows starring black people. This is the first Sean Black, black people. Black <laughs> Hold on, oh, Colin. Pull up the picture. Are these your parents, Colin? <laughs> All of a sudden, you want to rock the fro, brother. Colin, <sighs> Colin, get off the boo boo. Everybody likes Steve Urkel. Everybody like Carlton and who, and um who, the little guy. What's his name? G- Gary. Um, rest in peace. Didn't they? Arnold. Yeah, they did. Uh, what the fuck Arnold. is his name? Motherfucking. What you talking about, Willis? Yeah. Every that was just pop culture. That was just American. That's just comedy. That's just humor. Steve Urkel. Okay. You look at it as he's acceptable Negro. He's somebody that makes white people feel comfortable. White people don't get to decide who's accept. Everybody likes Steve Urkel. He was a nerd first. His main culture was nerd and intellect. That was Steve Urkel's main shit. Okay, so maybe he... It was a character. It's also the 90s. Like Created, it's, it's created by a black kid. Yeah. Now you want to shit on Steve Urkel? <sighs> oh, but it gets better, Chingo. Boy. Colin Kaepernick, bro. Get off the boo-boo. False narrative. Let's make it. Let's Those are amazing characters. Everybody likes Carlton, man. It's called humor, you fucking idiot. We'll get back to humor after we watch this. I want you to understand is what's being established is a power dynamic. Pause this bullshit. 
calls this fake ass shaft, bro. This <laughs> motherfucker fake ass shaft, bro. I already know, man. They said we gonna dress him like a black panther. And then he had to practice and shit to try to be as black as he possibly could. You grew up, you were raised by white folk, Colin. Oh, this gets better, dude. Not only were you raised by white folk, but you're obviously some kind of mixed. Because don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't let somebody else make a video saying, well, your nose is very slender and European. You don't get to tell us what's acceptable. What's an acceptable nose to us? Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to let you unpause it. But y'all have to see this shit. This shit is almost like a, a dude. It sounds it, like a parody. Yeah. If In Living Color was still on. Yes. It'd be like. Who would play it? Who, it, who's the character? Off the top of my head. Yeah. I'd have to say uh, Damon Wayne. Yes. 100%. The, the pop. What you. Uh, homie don't play that. Yep. I could. Actually, they did have a. I uh, think. If I'm not mistaken, there was a character of the. Um, kind of like the. Uh, like the Muslim dude in prison that like uh, that might have been a different character from a different movie but but I could see Damon Wayans playing like just putting on a big ridiculously like he's doing his best Shaft impression he's trying to be new age motherfucking Al Sharpton he's race baiting like a motherfucker I'm sure a lot of people fall for this like kids are just like wow this is a very brave man who stood up against police brutality in this racist country and you know thankfully nike is woke and you know i need you to think what Hoover can do for this to parody this this is nosotros somos la raza no necesitamos que nos digan eh, you know hay unos latinos que son pero bien coconut bien gringos de a madre eso no es permitido como mi sobrino La gente marginalized, la gente indígena. This is stolen land. No human is illegal. I am Edward James Olmos. (laughs) And I I approve this mensaje. I approve this. Orale, don't look at me, puppet. Anyway, let's finish watching this bullshit. Holds up Black Fist. Teams poke, prod, and examine you. Searching for any defect that might affect your performance. No boundary respect. No dignity left intact. Shut your goofy ass up, boy. Bro, who produced this? Keep watching. Don't interrupt it. Hold on. It gets better. Come on. What a what a slap in the face to roast slaves. Oh, come on. Dude. <sighs> Bro. This is that shit I'm talking about. <sighs> okay. I'm going to try not to be outraged and shit, but, you know, in the very beginning, when you know, when he first started kneeling, of course, it's kind of like, well, there is police brutality. Maybe that's how he feels. He's just doing a little kneeling, and I can see how people feel disrespected, you know, but then you also have veterans and soldiers that are like, well, that's free speech, and, you know, that's what we're trying to defend, and, you know, I'm willing to die for, his, you know, his ability to protest and and so on, but then it's like, wait a minute, he ain't even that good. <laughs> He, ain't, he wasn't even winning. He just mad because he got benched. Oh, he over there with Nike. Now Nike got slave labor. And then you find out he got a woke activist girlfriend. Now you see this hot piece of garbage. And it's like, who produced this? Who directed it? You know, I always go back to like, somebody had to make the script. There had to be edits and rewrites. They said, put more violin in the back. We needed to go from the slave master to the NFL guy and let it. And then you see Colin's big ass afro. <laughs> big ass afro. I'm actually going to look that up. That's a great question. Who who directed it? Probably, man, come on, man. This shit, bro. Colin Black and White is helmed by Duvernay, Sheldon Candice, Robert Townsend, um, Angel Christie Williams, and Kenny Lyon. The limited series exclusively produced by Duve, Duvernay. Duvernay? They probably say, you know what? We can't have too many white people in this production because, you know, somebody going to call us out and be like, motherfucker. 
so it's almost like unfair to white people if that's what they did because it's like it's not even who's the best cinematographer i think it was just a little too marxist it sounded a little it, it was just very like the way i see it right because i see i see like oh they literally tried to make him look like a black panther shaft you know just come out and say you for socialism and, and communism uh colin Men's Health wrote, Colin in black and white is redefining black masculinity. How in the fuck is that redefined? And then the subtitle is, uh, or the subcaption is, Ava DuVernay and the show's directors reveal how they brought Colin Kaepernick's untold story to Netflix. Okay. That is, uh, yeah, man. That's a whole other side of, of a whole different way of people look at things. And like I said on Chingo Chats, I was like, maybe this kid went through i don't know if he was in public school i don't know who influenced him where he got all these ideas of how i guess his idea his brain immune system never started to question like wait is steve urkel acceptable negro Uh, you know is this something that the white man created to marginalize us to try to train us how to behave that's acceptable to them and or is it possible that a black person could be an intellectual and could be a nerd or or could talk with a different kind of accent or dress different or dance different. It's almost like he's saying all real black people got rhythm. This Carlton guy is an acceptable Negro. It's like, bro, that's some racist ass shit. Even (laughs) black people are like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) What are you talking about, Colin? They're like, wait, 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 wait. Like, okay, I know, I understand I wonder how many black folk like are like, look, bro, I agree with you on a lot of this shit. But some of this shit, you reaching. Like, you telling me that a motherfucker uh, clocking you at the NFL combine, trying to see how fast you are, how strong you are. They want to know how much you bench press. They, nobody measured how fast J.J. Watt is. Is he a slave, too? Right. Are y'all million-dollar slaves in the NFL? And if, they, if it was that bad, why the fuck you ain't quit sooner? Yeah, he averaged 19, I said on Chingo Chat, he averaged $19 million a year playing for the NFL. Poorly, playing poorly, but, you know, whatever. And also, a fourth of the NFL is white. So, what does the fuck does that say about the rest I of the league? I just don't understand with this narrative, with the little violins in the background. Anyway, enough of that, dude. Uh, yeah. Th- that's really annoying. Um, but, you know, if that's the kind of, if that's where the bar is for content... I think it should give you and other comedians and people that are making content really good feelings about that bar is so high or so low rather that almost anything you make should be better than that. So the subjects that he's trying to tackle are a lot better communicated with humor. For sure. Make fun of the stereotypes. Be fun, You know what I'm saying? Be funny about it. Like I'd like to hear the stand-up version of what you're trying to say, Colin. You know what I'm saying? Like, like and then we can see if your idea holds some water if people gonna be on board like yeah man ain't no black nerds man you know how many black people like to skateboard and comic books and video games and nerdy shit tons a lot of them you can't just generalize a whole group of people and just be like yeah you know what i'm saying we all believe yeah george floyd so on and so forth I'm trying to find a clip of uh do you know who um Jason Wilson is. He was the he's the, he's the black like karate instructor guy that was on Rogan who has that viral video of the little boy that's trying to break the board and he starts crying. He's like he's like a motivational kind of mental coach as well. It was a great JRE, but he has this, this clip on Instagram recently where it's it was a, an old like probably 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s video where I don't know who who it was. It seemed like a Malcolm X kind of character was talking about how, you know, people in urban environments, they go out for these sports, you know, dreams and all they do is pursue sports and he breaks down the numbers. It's like there's X amount of millions of, you know, little black kids and they're all vying for these, you know, hundred positions on college teams. And then they try to get out for these seven positions on major leagues and blah, 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 rather than going out and trying to develop other skills outside of sports, maybe simultaneously or all together. So I don't know. It made a really good point And I mean, it applies to everybody too. Little Mexicans, little white boys, doesn't matter where they just try to get to the NFL. They try to get to, to the majors and that's going to be their escape. Meanwhile, they never learned anything else along the way. Yeah, man, and the educational system, you know what I'm saying? The educational system, how a lot of times, man, as we've been learning in the Virginia race and things like that, where things are getting heated and education is becoming like a bigger topic in the human consciousness, whether you Democrat, left or right. 
right? It don't matter what the hell you are. Some of these parents are starting to get pissed. And we're seeing that in, in the in, with the uh, Virginia, the governor thing. Um, you know, the educational system, bro. I don't know, man. No, I have no idea. Womp, womp, womp. Poopy yeah. Pants Biden. Yeah, Poopy Pants Biden. That was trending over the weekend. There was a rumor. So do you know what the rumor is? That he shit his pants. <laughs> yeah, I know. But do you know where, like, where it stemmed from, I guess? No. So he had that visit with the Pope, right? Yeah. He went to the Vatican. And um, there was reporters there, obviously. And somebody reported that, or people were asking, why is this meeting taking extremely long? Like, it was taking longer than any me- meeting with the Pope has ever taken, right? Like, and the tweet was something to the effect of, like, it's taking an extremely long, long, long time. Someone else reported that Biden apparently was in the restroom for a very long time due to an accident. That was what the reporter tweeted from what I'd read. And that's all we know. So it's all speculation. But this isn't the first time that there's been speculation that this guy shit his pants. Really? Yeah. When was the other time? I don't know. About a month or two ago, I feel like. Really? Yeah. How? When? Uh, I don't know. I could be completely making this up, but I remember people. That was already like something that people were saying before. Oh, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, it could be fake news, right, coming out of the right. But, but let me ask you this: Is that a sign of like degenerative diseases? Like, um, de- you know, that could be just a sign of getting super old, right? But the clenching of the fist, I know for sure. I've read is a dementia <sighs> kind of thing, which. <laughs> that's sad your halloween costume was great by the way yeah you know what honestly man i felt bad i should (laughs) have held up a let's go brandon sign just to for one Uh to let people know that i wasn't no biden supporter that should have been the motherfucking tell because some people were in the in that neighborhood we were in the suburbs they were kind of like oh is that our lord and savior joe biden and as it is like it's a ton of hispanic kids that be trick-or-treating out Uh, there oh it's funny should be like no it's brandon his name's brandon remember (laughs) Who? When oh, they were I'm, like, is this our Lord and Savior? Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's like, is this our Lord and Savior, Joe Biden? And I, I'm thinking to myself, like, hey, motherfucker, I didn't vote for him. Like, <laughs> I wanted to say something. Then I triggered an old guy. There was an old couple out there on their lawn with the candies yeah. and stuff. And uh, I had on my little Brandon co- costume. We were taking penny trick-or-treating. And um, he's like, you know, he's over there with the Pope. He needs to be over here trying to fix something. And, you know. And uh, his wife, I know that's right. And he was just like, you know what? You know, this country's going to shit and this and that. And I'm like, I know, dude. He's like, he's like, is that Sleepy Joe? That's what he was saying <laughs> as I was walking up. I said, you know what, sir? I don't need no candy. I need some real strong coffee to wake me up, you know, trying to let him know. Like, And I chimed in when he said, when he mentioned the Pope, I was like, yeah, he tries to say he's super Catholic, but he got all this abortion. Yeah, he's on. like, he's the second most pro-abortion president ever. He ain't no real Catholic. But, uh. That's that, and like I said, I felt bad, man. It's kind of sad. I felt bad doing the hands after you told me that. No, it's priceless. It's I great. was like, but don't feel it, bad. It's Halloween, man. Yep. So yeah, uh, people get mad with the "Let's Go Brandon" thing, like the Southwest pilot, which I can see the argument of like, hey, man, you know you're gonna trigger people. <clears throat> it's gonna put your company in a bad place. Like, just fly the plane. Tell us, enjoy your flight. Give us a, hey, hey, bitch, we finna have some turbulence. Like, keep it to pilot talk. And don't try to trigger all these liberals on here talking about, let's go Brandon. And supposedly there was an AP reporter on the flight and he tried, or he or she, whatever, tried to like bust into the cockpit to try to fucking get a comment or some stupid shit. Boy, you don't know about the rules of the sky. You can't be doing that type of stuff. You can't be congregating in the front. Well, it it was mm -hmm. some chick, right? And she tweeted out, um... People made a big deal. They, they compared it to, I guess, pilots can now just say, long live ISIS, and Southwest will do nothing. Dude, another reporter did say, as an experiment, I'd love for an, uh, Southwest, a Southwest Air, at Southwest Air, pilot to say, long live ISIS before taking off. My guess is, one, the plane would be immediately grounded. Two, the pilot fired. And three, a statement issued by the airline within hours. You're an idiot, Asha Rengapapa. First of all... You're an idiot. First of all, you don't play around with terrorist jokes while anywhere near tsa anywhere near airport don't play around talking about bomb uh you know what i'm saying don't be talking obviously you can't do that silly rabbit (laughs) nobody's gonna fucking back isis babosa (laughs) this is basically a fucking political joke babosa i haven't heard that forever if anybody you have to be your head has to be so far up your behind on the left like you watching the view all day in the metaverse like you literally in the virtual studio audience at the view 
if you believe this rhetoric that um saying let's go Brandon, although maybe in poor taste, is somehow equal to saying long live ISIS. This uh I'm just going to be nice here. This great journalist here from the AP, who, this pendeja. who is a law enforcement reporting team leader and a DOJ, Supreme Court of the United States, uh, once always a New York City crime reporter. Now, this is, she's, her name's Colleen Long. She's the one that tweeted that shit out. So the flight was going from Houston to Albuquerque. Look what she has pinned to. She has like a George Floyd, like kids, you know, thing pinned from last October. Just virtue <laughs> signaling left and right with her 3,000 followers on Twitter. But she's changing the world. Uh, her tweet originally was TFW. I think that, what does that stand for? T, uh, what? DFW? TFW. I think it's like that face win or that, oh. or that face. Yeah. That, I, I think know. that face when you're trying to go on vacation and then the pilot says the very thing you're working on over the loudspeaker and you have to try to get him, try to get a comment from him, but they almost get you removed from the plane. You're an idiot too, Colleen. How about that? You dummy. This person tried to go up in the cockpit. She then tweeted, she followed up to her original tweet and said, in defense of the airline, I was asking them to uh, open a locked cockpit. Probably sounded insane. Well, no shit. You know what, man? Um, If we don't fix our educational system, there's going to be more and more people like this. I'll be having deep convos with my 13-year-old. Like, I'm trying to remember what it was specifically. Oh, I told her about the Virginia thing, about how they tried to cover up this this thing this incident where the kid went in the girl's restroom and raped a girl a kid in a, a boy in a skirt went up in there sodomized a girl right and then how they moved him switched him schools two weeks later he sodomized a 15 year old this time he went 14 first 15 and the dad went to complain he had the rape kit and everything he gets thrown in, in cuffs and then i told her how the school board got with the doj the white house knew they all tried to cover it up and they tried to say they getting too spicy. These parents getting too spicy up in here. They domestic terrorists. And she and anyway, but we have uh, talks all the time about like, like why is um why is free speech important? And what are some ways they could try to convince you that we should start labeling things as violent? Those words are problematic, troublesome, violent. You know, hate speech. All of a sudden, you start saying you can't say certain things. And she's like, well, you're not supposed to be mean to people, dad. And you, you can't go around being a bully and this and that. I was like, yeah, but you can't go around having censorship because then we're, we're fucking Australia. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to. That's one of the things that, that people on the left really hate is when you talk about freedom. You know, like my freedoms kind of like the fucking uh, the Michigan or who was it now? The, the, the Jersey senior advisor to, to the governor there was like, you know, you, they're all talking about their shit, the freedom in their shit. Yeah, mira. mira. You know? You know, so pinche freedom. Catela seco freedom. Yeah. You have to, pinche freedom. You have to really hammer that home with everybody, not just young people. Like that when you get those taken away, they don't come back. One. And two, if you just let freedom do what freedom's been doing since freedom was a thing here, you'd be better off. It's almost like you know how Hong Kong was a symbol of I don't I'm not an expert on Hong Kong, but you know, the fact that Hong Kong existed somewhat out of the clutches of the ccp mm -hmm. was a danger to the idea of the ccp and, and this governance of theirs right and their right. system because it was a constant reminder of like that's what y'all could look like if we weren't in the way so they had to shut that shit down and america is the baddest freest bitch has been under attack since the fucking beginning because it's a threat to the globalist and elitist way of, of a system that they can really clamp down. The shit that they're doing in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, etc., the Vax Passport, Social Credit Score, you know, the CCP way of doing things. That's why they're looking at America like, we need to hurry up and clamp down on their economy. We need to miseducate their kids. We need to destabilize them. The only way this Marxism is going to stick is we need to know which fabric of society we need to fucking, that little thread we need to yank on. Is it race? Colin Kaepernick, is that what you try? You know what I'm saying? Race, race, race. They so obsessed with race, 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 race. The governor, the dude that was running, McCawful, running for governor, uh, the Democrat for Virginia, he said it was too many white teachers. That's what he said. And not in those words, but he's like, you know, the percentage of minority kids is blah, blah, blah. And the, you meanwhile, the percentage of white teachers is blah, blah, blah. We need to really fix that so people can feel more, <coughs> more comfortable. And, um... People can feel more comfortable. Yeah, kids can feel more comfortable. And it's like, you fucking white man. You fucking lefty Larry white man. The parents are over it, bro. 
not only did they catch wind of the CRT, where one minute they're saying, it's not a thing, it doesn't exist. It's this theory from Derek Bell, uh, one of Obama's mentors. Uh, it's legal, scholarly, critical theory and extension, but it's the racial version. And, um, okay, and then the next minute they're like, okay, it is a thing, and it's important, and we need to keep it in the curriculum. Well, Merrick Garland's son-in-law gets paid. Like, there's a lot of money to be made mm -hmm. off this educational shit. You could be uh, teaching them about critical theory. You know, you could, you know, come, I don't know what the fuck they're trying to, these um, third-party organizations, like, we're going to teach you how to be more woke. These Ibrahim, what's his name, Ibrahim X. Kendi. Kendi, yeah. These woke people, these critical Marxists. Who also sounds like such a dummy when he talks. Some of these people just sound so dumb when they talk, and yet they're convincing so many people of these really bad ideas. It, it's a con. He just got exposed. Did you see that tweet of his that went viral? No. Let me show it to you. Um, so basically, he had to delete that shit because he kind of exposed his con. He's like a con man. So he, he basically tweeted like, oh, white kids are having to lie on college applications and say they're minority so that they can have a better chance of getting accepted and something or other so here's something on zerohedge.com did ibram x kendi just give away the con here we are so his real name is uh ibram henry rogers he's made a name for himself as an anti-racist activist which is a big old scam because it's like are you racist no okay but do you believe xyz no Okay, well, then you're racist. It's like this little con. All right, let me read it real quick. He, uh, he made a name for himself as an anti-racist activist, which is an Orwellian way of saying that his entire career is based upon arguing that America is a systemically racist country and that all white Americans are complicit. However, in a tweet that he swiftly deleted, Kennedy effectively acknowledged that power in America lies with racial minorities, not with whites. Oh, and he's a transphobe. So anyway, Candy's breakout bestseller, How to Be an Anti-Racist, is on every critical race theory reading list. And he charges 625 an hour to go to school boards and educate you about critical theory. So they have it in K through 12 schools now, colleges. Some colleges made it mandatory. It's in corporations and the American military. In 2019, Candy wrote an essay for The Atlantic claiming, as all race hustlers do, that America's real founding was 1619, when the British brought slaves to America's shores. Yada, yada, yada. And there you have the whole systemic racism theory in full. Of course, even ardent leftists, if honest, concede that this is an ahistorical lie. Um, so yeah, he deleted his tweet. Uh, he's full of shit. This critical race theory stuff is very, very dangerous. Keep your kids away from it. It just teaches your kids to be victims. It just basically says racism is everywhere you just got to look for it until you find it and it's not enough for people to say that they're not racist they have to be anti-racist they have to also buy into these other things where basically all white kids have privilege you know there's a thing called critical sex theory bro pull up this clip bro what i don't know if i sent it to you i thought i texted it to y'all but um type in youtube uh tucker carlson college student critical sex theory <laughs> it's from three years ago okay because i don't remember how they titled the video no it's fine basically the student got in trouble bro he basically said there's two genders to the teacher she wanted to push the 78 genders oh you did send it's this three years ago and i just saw it coincidentally and um and he's like yeah um they were she was trying to force me to write a written apology and go in front of the class and say nothing while they all give me their comments and i had 10 days to do this but before i had a chance the following day she turned me into student court about to have disciplinary action just because he was pushing back on her idea saying the 75 cent to a dollar wage gap for gender is been debunked and um he was just pushing back saying what the fuck is white splaining mansplaining so the lady was trying to push critical sex theory, basically saying anytime a man talks, you can interpret it as mansplaining mm. and so on. And that's why these things are dangerous because it's like this it's like this weird chess game where you're just like, yeah, but I'm not racist. Uh, yeah, you are. You fit a little bit on the lighter side of the scale. Yeah, I can't find the video. I'll try oh, to find fuck. it before the end of the episode. Do you, but if you can give me a title. I can Maybe sure email it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll give you a title. Who did I text this to? Or if you text, if you have it, maybe, did you text it to me or send it next? Yes, yeah, student ejected for telling professor there are only two genders. 
This video is three years old. All this stuff has been in your universities for years. All this critical theory stuff. That's why all your little cousins, nephews, daughters, little sisters, friends that be in these colleges, they be on some lefty Larry shit and they believe all this stuff. Of course, there's an ad. Student ejected for telling professor there's only two genders. I'm old enough to remember when you wouldn't get canceled. When there were two genders? Yeah. Back in the day, it was just like... What is even going on in this world? And Back in the day, it was like, okay, there's boys Americans and girls. Americans experience a rapid, in fact, a massive inflation in genders. At one point, biologists were allowed to determine what biology was, and there were two, male and female. Now, there's agender, bigender, two-spirit, herja, hedra. We could go on forever, uh, literally forever, because the core orthodoxy is that there are infinite genders, but not everyone agrees. Some people believe in science at their peril, it turns out. Lake Ingle is one of them. He's a student at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. In a religion class, a class about Christianity, he stated his belief that there are two genders because, again, that's biology. And for that, he was told he had to apologize in front of the class, stand silently while they critiqued him re-education camp stuff. Lake Ingle joins us tonight. Lake, thanks for coming up. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So I don't know if I was mischaracterizing that. You had this professor called Allison Downey who was so threatened because you disagreed with her that she tried to get you to sign some form apologizing for your unorthodox, non-allowed thoughts. And then what happened? Right. Yeah, she asked that I would sign a document complying with her, asking me to apologize to the class as well as giving her a written apology. She asked that I would stand in front of the class in silence um, as I apologized, and then they would give any comments on my outbursts. Did she say what specifically she was so offended by? Uh, she didn't like the fact that I disagreed with the subject being pushed in class, being more than one gender, male privilege, uh, systemic sexism, and uh, mansplaining. What's, is mansplaining a, a, a measurable thing? I mean, is it a like species of social science studying mansplaining? What is mansplaining anyway? Do you know? Did you learn? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's any time a, a man speaks, really. <laughs> huh. And so no, it you, isn't measurable. What did you... Right. I mean, it's a, it's a species of dumbness, really. So, But what did you... It's propaganda. What did you it's say propaganda. about gender that made her so mad, specifically? Well, I first referenced uh, entities like The Economist who have debunked the myth of the 77 cents on the dollar wage gap. And I also stated that biologists don't agree that there are more than two genders. Um, they don't believe that there are 72 genders or more across the board. M most of them disagree. And she really didn't appreciate that. So by citing the longstanding view of biologists, the hard scientists, Allison Downey, who supposedly you say she's a professor, tried to get you to stand in front of the class and take abuse. Did you do that? No, I didn't. Uh, I was supposed to, but she really didn't give me a chance. I was given 10 days to comply, uh, but the day after she asked this of me, she decided to push it on through to the university's provost office to then hold a hearing, which would decide whether or not it could be allowed in class, period. Why do you go to this school? Or why does anybody go to this school or any <laughs> other school? I mean, what are you getting out of this exactly? Well, I initially went for athletics my freshman year, but that's a long gone dream now. Um, I'm pretty much just stuck here. Man, I wish I could hire you. I would encourage you and anyone else who has any experience like this to drop out and join the workforce. It's not worth it. This is a joke. It's a bubble. And it's we're a fucking realize joke. That and Tucker went to Harvard, I think, right, didn't he? He went to a pretty good school. He's, he's educated. He's got all the degrees. He's been to all those places. He's, you know, mingled with the elites for a long time. Yeah, he works for a station that's owned by the Murdochs. And yeah, but he's pushing the boundary that I don't know any other TV personality or... Go ahead. Yeah, you heard about his new documentary? No. <sighs> is, that, is it out? Pull up the trailer. Oh, shit. Bro, I, how many times have I brought up Fox Nation documentaries? Too many for people to like. All right. He dropping one about January 6th, my boy. <laughs> it's about January 6th, boy. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And he got Darren Beatty on there, the dude from um, Revolver.News, who was one of the first people that said, oh, ain't it funny that the dude that's in charge of the D.C., FBI, he came from Michigan, where they also had a test run of 
crazy white boys, vanilla ISIS, going to kidnap the governor. But it turns out like 90% of those dudes were feds or informants. And ain't it funny, he also pointed out, ain't it funny that the leader of that militia, the Oath Keepers, that they always bring up as an example. Like, you got the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and they're crazy and this. He he didn't get in trouble for none of his involvement, even though they kept bringing up how it was all these little groups. Why? Because he's a fed. He's an informant. All these motherfuckers are snitches, and they were the ones, they got footage of these dudes like, we need to storm the Capitol. We need to go in there. And everyone's like, what? Fed, fed, fed. We don't need to do that. Shut the fuck up, fed. No, uh, this this is might get me in trouble, but we need, we need to storm. We need to hit the Capitol. We're going to take our country back. And they were trying to it's a false flag. Dude, it's so illegal. What is that What is that called? It's uh, entrapment, right? It's entrapment. It's, it's a bunch of things. The whole thing is a psyop. So you pull it up, right? Tucker Carlson, January 6th, Doc, Fox Nation, Vanity Fair. Fox News seems to be distancing itself from Tucker Carlson's deranged January 6th I documentary. Read that. LA Times, Fox Nation uh, host... Or yeah, Fox Station host Tucker Carlson pushes false claims in Doc Daily Beast. Tucker Carlson's ridiculous claims <laughs> on uh, Patriot Purge trailer. I guess that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're only using Google, which I, hey, I love tech, I love Google because they're a huge internet company, they have resources and whatnot, but you, this they is gotta all- They got to run cover. This is all that's going to populate if you try to look this up. I read that entire Vanity Fair article, and they're basing that whole narrative on the fact that somebody from Fox, after receiving, um, I guess, an advance right of the write-up, said, oh, they didn't mention that it's on Fox Nation. Y'all need to put on there that it's, it's going to be on Fox Nation. Just because they said, hey, don't forget where motherfuckers can know where to find it, that part was missing. They're like, ah, they're trying to distance themselves, I see. Oh, really? All based off that. If you read the, all the way to the end, like if you read the last paragraph, that's basically what it is. Like uh, the person who, who responded to comment basically said, we don't see enough on there about Fox Nation. You know, while I pull this video up, I do my best. And <clears throat> have you found yourself reading every article you try to read to the end so you make sure you don't miss out on any of the Hell stupid no. shit that they're going to leave out or all the context that's missing from you know headlines or or paragraphs or summaries of, of things no i do try to understand like how other people on the other side of the you know i try not to be in a new silo but people who are on the new silo on the left how they see stuff how they're convinced of things like how can this dude in virginia convince the parents you know they, that's why they put all the stunts. They had the fake tiki tor- torch people out there and pulling stunts. They took a picture of somebody with a Confederate flag sewn to their jacket as the image of the other guy, the Republican, like just doing desperate ass shit because they got busted on the critical race theory. Parents are not liking it. Uh, it's a very rich county, Loudoun County. Parents are pissed off. Um, you got a lot of like rich engineers, tech a lot of shit out there. Big government jobs, big uh, defense Tucker contracts. Carlson's making a series based on lies and false conspiracies. I can't find the trailer for this to save my life on <clears throat> Google. It's not on YouTube? It's not. I mean, YouTube, I have Tucker. This is the most okay. deranged story Twitter. in history. Go to Twitter. Put in, um, I guess, go to Tucker's page. Tucker's Twitter. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Sass. He got 4.7 million. For now. Boom. It's dropped. I think it dropped last night. Patriot Purge, there it is, from Tucker Carlson Originals, is available now. Stream the Fox Nation series and all Tucker content right now for 90 days free exclusively by going to TuckerCarlson.com. I feel um, like if I sign up, if I add Fox Nation to my my slew of already existing streaming services, I'm going to go further and further down the, 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 the far right rabbit hole. Well, I think Mighty Soul did uh, subscribe, but they had a real good one about the windmills. Wind. Like the, They were interviewing people and... That was fascinating because I didn't know all that about windmills. And it's very good to know the argument around nuclear, wind, solar, like because... Like nuclear is awesome? Yeah, <laughs> especially, especially Generation 5, clean, safe nuclear. Um, but, you know, you would think like, oh, wind, okay, let's, let's harness that energy and it should be good. And it's like, no, you're going to have brownouts, blackouts, rolling blackouts. Um, it's going to be a nuisance. It kills birds, bats makes a ton of noise it, it makes people dizzy if they live near it's just oh, like blown away the people versus wind That's yeah like, uh okay <clears throat> i had to go to the tucker's actual website there's all these articles on that on this doc or whatever series it's part one and i couldn't find a single video on google so anyway what about tucker crossing okay yeah, there it is here. patriot purge part one <sighs> the domestic war on terror is here 
is coming after half of the country. The January 6th assault on the Capitol and the tragic deaths and destruction that occurred underscored what we have long known. The rise of domestic violent extremism is a serious and growing national security threat. The Biden administration will confront this threat with the necessary resources and resolve. America is not a place where you hold people for months in solitary without charges. This is what Guantanamo was set up for, for Al Qaeda terrorists who were not US citizens. You don't do that, that's not America. That's the gulag. You thought the first war in terror was dysfunctional, unjust, counterproductive. Wait until you get war on terror 2.0. and our office wants to ensure that there was shock and awe that we could charge as many people as possible. I heard a, a loud voice bark out, FBI, come out with your hands up. People who are witnessing this inside Baghdad, uh, it must be shock and awe indeed. The new Secretary of Defense ordered the entire U.S. military to, quote, stand down while investigators cleanse the ranks of political extremists. Purging out of the military any dissenting voice. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. <laughs> January 6th was a honeypot. They're gonna use this event for every bit of political persecution they can milk out of it. Yep. <clears throat> we tried to warn y'all. Hmm. We tried to warn y'all. There's a clip I posted. Oh, is it still going? Is it? Oh, this is a full thing? No. Wait, pause real quick. After pause real quick. I'm trying. Oh, there we go. Okay. I posted a little clip the other day. Got zero views, zero comments because I'm shadow banned. But basically, I was on there saying it's not about left or right. It's about how they're going to use all this against all of us. And y'all going to look back at this clip and say, damn, Chingo was trying to tell us. Meaning, they're going, you, you thought the Patriot Act was bad, where they were like, oh, we could tap your phone now. We could do this. We could monitor this and that. When this shit kicks in, it's about to kick in for everybody. You were just part of the pond. That's all. You, would, you happen to have an opinion that will, I don't, I don't even know how they're going to go about it, but it, they're going to clamp down on everybody and everything. <laughs> and they're going to use climate Oh, that's the new emergency. Hey, you're not allowed to have that kind of car. Hey, where you going? Can't go too far from your house, man. You're taking away from the climate. Hey, you're not allowed to have a job. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Strap into your VR. Get back on the metaverse. Everybody. Eat your cricket pace. You will own nothing and be happy. Which we played some of that metaverse commercial, guys, on Chingo Chats, which you'll hear tomorrow. Uh, we might play some of the, because it's a long-ass commercial, long video. We might play some of it later to get some reaction from Chingo on here. But that's a scary... This whole thing, like, actually, the cover art for this is, is a wonderful. Patriot Purge. I mean, think about even even the optics. Even if I'm like, Chingo, you're tripping, bro. It wasn't a purge of the military. They just kind of had to see if there were any QAnon people. It's like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Is that what you, you bought this? You really believe, like, bro, they're just checking their Instagram accounts, bro. Todos los soldados, wey, they got to do that. Hey, you can't be... Todo radicalized. Uh, what if what if you're Mr. ISIS on the side and you're in the army and then we don't know. We got to check, bro. Every, it's for our safety. And now you're purging people, anything that's dissidents, political dissidents. When I grew up, man, you know, America was like free. And I didn't think that uh, unsavory opinion would label you a fucking domestic terrorist. I didn't know that. I knew that in other countries, you couldn't be a political dissident. You couldn't be a journalist that says shit against the government. You couldn't. I already know in some countries, you can't tweet certain shit or whatever. But goddamn, <laughs> call me paranoid. Anyway, we're going to finish watching the trailer. Of what? You don't want to finish the Patriot? Or at oh, least... yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had to <laughs> chime in real quick. I thought you were talking about a uh, fucking uh, metaverse. Media Sorry. and the national security state. You can't distinguish between Al-Qaeda and Saddam when you talk about the war on terror used exaggerated threats and outright deception. Contacts between Al-Qaeda 
and Saddam Hussein's regime, there are others. We know they have weapons of mass destruction. To associate certain ideas with certain events. 9-11 is Saddam Hussein weapons of mass destruction. This was the first war on terror. Now, it's happening again. January 6th was worse than 9-11. The very same corrupt interest in Washington that pushed the Iraq war under false pretenses are now pushing the lie of a domestic white terror army. Terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. They are tying white nationalist terrorism to Trump voters. You voted for the person who the Klan supported. They're tying January 6th to 9-11. I would like to see January 6th as burned into the American mind as firmly as 9-11. They're tying millions of law-abiding Americans to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Pushing them more into this violent white extremism, much the way bin Laden, you know, did sort of inspiring people to be this way. You link two concepts together, even if they don't belong together. No external terrorist ever did this to us. We've never worried like this, even after 9-11. You put it in a headline, oh my I'm a terrorist, what an Al Qaeda. Idiot. When you shove I it in people's guy. throats enough. Not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. Then they come to believe it. Ooh, I'm glad I'm not white. <laughs> used as a pretext to strip. Oh, but we are, Chingo. Y'all got America a target on y'all's back, boy. Of their core <laughs> they about to piss off the white boys. They keep fame them as clamping down terrorists. like that. But what exactly happened on January 6th? How much of what we were told about that day is a lie? Hey, boy. Washington is willing to launch a second war on terror on its own citizens. What else are they capable of? Ooh, they coming for you, Tucker. You done said too much. I'm surprised they've let him say this much, to tell you the truth. That's why they ran cover. That's why Vanity Fair, everybody. Tucker got some shit dropping. He's about to, he's about to wake everybody up so that they could realize, hey, bro, they, this is just going to be a pawn to come for your rights. They got to scare you enough. They need this propaganda, and we're about to weaponize all our intelligence agencies against y'all motherfuckers. If you thought the NSA shit, the Edward Snowden stuff was bad. Which it is. Buckle up for this 2.0. You're not going to be able to have certain opinions. You're not going to be able to vote a certain way. You're not going to be able to hang with certain people or go certain places. Um, check this video out. This is a very good video that I want to show you because it kind of goes on the same line of uh, conversation. Ask. It's just six feet. Just three weeks. It's just non essential businesses. It's just non essential workers. Just gyms, salons, and sporting activities. Just until we work it out. Chuck it's Liddell. just a bar, just a restaurant, just adult care facilities. It's just schools. Just to save your grandmother. It's just until the cases go down. Just to flatten the curve. Just to keep elders from living in fear. It's just a few more weeks. Just to keep from overwhelming medical services. Just places of worship. It's just singing. It's just missing the birth of your child. Just a canceled birthday party. It's just a wedding. It's just a funeral. Just to travel. It's just three months of lockdown. It's just some stickers on the floor. Just a one-way system. It's just temporary plastic barriers. It's just until we get the vaccine. It's just an app. Just for tracking. It's just to let others know they're safe when you're here. Just to let others know with who you've been in contact. Just in some areas. It's just a government guideline. Just for your own good. It's just to protect others. It's just fact-checking, not censorship. Just a government mandate. Just the law now. Just a scientific fact. It's just these scientists and doctors. Not those. Just because of the second wave. It's just to keep your child safe. It's just another lockdown. It's just four more weeks. Just cancel Christmas and New Year's. It's just school. They can do it from home. Just a swab up your nose. It's just so you can keep your job. It's just for medical information. Just a jab. Just a car to store your medical information. It's just so you can travel. It's just for your passport. It's just so you can send your kids to school. It's just a third jab. It's just so you can go to a concert. Just so you can get a driver's license. Just so you can vote. Just a facility to keep others safe from you it's just because of the third variant it's just a few more years just for those people just better to keep it this way just because we said so it's just your freedom it's not just it's unjust start resisting now they will never 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 ever stop it's just a Shout out Ian Smith Fitness, Chad Man. Prather, the whole crew that did this video. Can you DM that to me, Dad? Absolutely. 
It's very a, persuasive. Yeah, should have called Chingo Bling, but yeah, go ahead. Way to reframe it mm-hmm. with the word just. Like, because when, when people are overwhelmed and don't have the information to be able to do their own due diligence, when they kind of trust the government and trust the CDC and the World Health Organization, they trust Fauci and they trust this and trust that, they trust the news. And you're confusing them in the fog of war and you fucking scaring the shit out of them with this damn death counter, which went away. Just Miraculously. Went away. Just went away. They just took it down right after uh, Biden got in. But anyway, this is very persuasive in my opinion, maybe because I already kind of see things through the lens of be careful of the elitist, globalist, communist, the CCP, and really our own, our own government that would love to take advantage of this situation as a little test run to control your motherfucking ass and shut your ass up and we got you. Like, all this pesky constitution and this pesky free speech and all this pesky Second Amendment and so on, it's a way to bypass all of that with this emergency exception because they frame it as it's just for your health. It's just a little bit. It's just, you know, stickers on the floor. I know this was like maybe seven to ten people, uh, all pretty big social media type personalities, but that's what I was saying in in Chingo Chats kind of where it's like there has to be, in my opinion, like maybe it's super too optimistic, but there's more Americans that rather you leave them the fuck alone than those that are trying to push against these stupid, really small, squeaky wheel ideas that are getting a lot of attention right now to where, excuse me, to where before 2024 or even maybe throughout the primaries you're going to see a shift in where the parents have had enough obviously steve bannon uh yeah bannon nailed this for i don't know the last six months or so he's been saying this like oh the, wait till they come to jab your kids wait till they keep wanting to mask your kids yeah wait till school starts that's what it was wait yeah. till school starts the moms are going to come out or something like that <laughs> the and mama bears the mama bears and it's just you know we're living through it right now and luckily we have i mean i don't want to speak for everybody because i know it's hard but i try to just like let's try to tote this line of like keeping both sides coming in so that we can see what everybody's saying and make the most sense of it that we can because a lot of the shit coming out of one camp makes so little sense you know boys in skirts and this and that and only that there's not too all that kind of shit like that's not gonna fly that can't fly that much longer well check this out all the raza all the fools right all the mexican americans that are like you know consider themselves on the left and they think everything MAGA, America first, patriotic, every, America's racist, right? I wonder how they look at some of this stuff. And it's like, hey, orale, homie, hey, are you transphobic, big doc? Let me find out you're transphobic, homie. Well, you don't think boys in skirts are allowed with the females, doc? Like, you keep voting Democrat, you keep calling Chingo a coconut, but do you realize some of the stuff that's ideologi- ideologically happening on your side? Like, you're so quick to dismiss anybody that's, that, that votes a certain way or voted a certain way or, or looks at things a certain way or they're kind of like, like, for example, man, some of my Cali friends, you know, they really think they're like, hey, man, you know, I hate masks, too. I hate masks just as much as the next guy, bro. No, you don't. But, no, this is what they say. I know, I know. I know. It's like. But, you know, the only way we're going to get through this is if everybody fucking listens and that's why we're still in this. That's the fucking con. That's the trick. They dividing us by making you think that we're the hold up. The crazy fucking America first people that are dubious about like, hey, guys, this Vax passport is not a good idea. Like we have to start pushing back on some of this compliance. If not, it's just never fucking ending. Nah, dog, you're just a, you're just mad because your papi trompas lost, fool. It's like, um, this ain't got nothing to do with him. One of my souls, uh, I mentioned this earlier, her epiphany was when she said y'all were eating somewhere, it was like a year or two ago, and you saw somebody, y'all, she saw y'all somebody, saw somebody come in with a MAGA hat on, and it made her so upset. That was more than two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So whenever, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. I think it was like after the election. After she had won is what she had said. And the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth. Sorry. Man. Smooth. She goes, no, that was by accident. Was she like, was reflecting. She was like, I can't believe how mad it, it made me at the time yeah, to see somebody just walk in. Yeah, because of the view and she reference those shows to see somebody just wearing a hat that said, Make America Great Again. Yeah, because it's like, well, we know what it really means. <laughs> right. Like, it's divisive. You know, it's, it's, it's what's wrong with our country. And it's like, yeah, but that was before all the mandates, the forced shots. Like, do y'all not realize, mm-hmm. bro, that, you know, debatably, it's not all Brandon's fault that, you know, the gas is high. But then again, he did wage war against our fucking energy. Um, Independence. Yeah, everything about it. Everything fossil fuel related. But 
he pretty, I mean, without even getting into how did, the, did they fuck up Afghanistan? Was it all his fault? What about the border? Is it, was it all his fault? Did Trump really have it perfect and smooth? And was he really real zero tolerance? Like were some people getting through? Like the wall wasn't all the way built yet. You know what I'm saying? But the mandates and the constant rhetoric of going up there like, you know, we've been patient long enough. It's time for the new world order. It's like, on top of all the crises, on top of is he sleepy? Did he poop his pants or not? <laughs> is he a globalist? Why is he running around at all these G20s and shit talking about America needs to do better and we're going to we're going to lead the way when it comes to climate and we're going to just kill our energy industry and we're going to ship off our jobs and China's going to make all our batteries and they're going to mine it out of Afghanistan. I heard his caravan of cars had like 80 cars in it or like something. 86. Like um I don't know if this is kind of a, a non sequitur or still in, in in the same line of conversation but I just had the thought cuz I haven't seen these comments in a long time but before when we first started the show I would see more of the cuz you mentioned Cali friends, you mentioned the fools and the, these kind of people. Chicano studies, I used to say like take a Chicano I, I would see take a Chicano's uh, Chicano studies class, you who, know. Who would say that? People in the comments oh, okay. would say, and and I don't even really honestly know what the fuck that means. I don't think I ever... It's just victimhood. That's all it is. I don't know what that class consists of. It's focused on all the plight of the brown, pe- brown people. Okay. No, I was curious to see if what you knew about it, because I haven't seen that comment in a long time, but it used to be something that, became more, or that was more frequent. Well, I hadn't seen it in a while either, but um, I might have even taken a few of those fucking stupid ass classes, because you're thinking they're going to be easy and shit. So um, there's a lot of like Latin American stuff. Actually... One of the professors went to uh, my show in San Antonio. Word? Yeah, and I referenced the uh, SA Current, which mm-hmm. is a leftist pop- publication, where they did a stupid write-up on me, and I mentioned them in the show. I was like, yeah, they probably, some of the SA Current reporters are probably here taking notes, trying to see what they could take out of context and make me look stupid. <laughs> and then afterwards, the professor was like, hey, remember me, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, ah, at the end, he's like, well, I have some friends over at the Current. I'll tell them to go easy on you type thing. He's like super lefty Larry. And I was like, I was like, oh, really? Do you still know some people over there? He's like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. It's been a long time. Like, he, I don't know, tried to change the subject. But anyway, the Chicano Studies stuff, um, it's been a long time. But if I had to guess, sure, let's it's probably going to be like, they're going to talk about like Dol- Dolores Huerta and, of course, maybe like some Cesar Chavez, like the Brown Berets, like the equivalent of like, um, arguably Marxist, uh, like Black Panther type mm-hmm. type of people and you know, they might talk about the Zoot Suit Riots. They might talk about, like, um, where they bulldoze that neighborhood in L.A. to make Dodger Stadium. Mm-hmm. Just, like, all the bad shit. Like, how maybe there were some uh, lynchings of some Mexicans mm. way, way, way back in the day. And, you know, what are the current repercussions? And basically, how are you oppressed and marginalized over and over and over again? This is your identity. Mm. This, is, this is who you are. This is how you need to think. Maybe that's why I didn't really jive with college much because a lot of that those type of conversations, I, as much as I liked philosophy and I liked the idea of sociology and groups and stuff like that, the way that they try to present it, as much as I like to hear people out and see, see what they feel and, and why they feel it, it just, I don't like it that much. I don't like you living in your feelings all the time about shit that happened forever ago while at the same time you're doing nothing about your current or future <clears throat> situation. I mean, it's not going to help you get no job. There ain't no job in that. <laughs> If anything, it's just you're going to look at the world in a disadvantage and it's very just victimhood and yeah. I'm marginalized. There's no such thing as an illegal. No human is illegal. This is stolen land. It's like, okay, cool. Are you done? Are you done? <laughs> Are you finished? Like that Kevin Hart joke? Yeah. Are you done? Are you done? And then it's like, all right, now can we talk about all practical things? Are you a citizen? Actually, yes. Do you work for a living? Well, how's the dollar? You want to talk economy? Let's talk about what policies affect these economics. Um, what kind of job do you do? Oh, I do construction work, manual labor. Okay. It, the longer that border stays wide open, it's bringing down your wages. You know what? I started to notice that. You know what I mean? And here's what the globalist elitists are doing. They're shipping out your jobs overseas. We need to make America first. We need to make the dollar strong, suppress inflation. Like, those are the real conversations we need to be having. Go Speaking ahead. on the subject mm-hmm. of Made in America, products, entrepreneurship, and all this shit. The freedom? If, if the freedom of America. If you have an idea. I, so I, 
Uh, let's shift real quick. We got some other subjects we'll get to, but um, I, I met with some old buddies over the weekend that I hadn't seen in a long time. They just had babies too. They're like two months, three months old. They're like, they can never get away. So we got coffee. We went to Catalina Cafe on Washington. Beautiful coffee place. Every Saturday, they have like a spontaneous car show that kind of sprouts up there from like old vintage cars to like new modern race cars. Really cool. We walked a couple blocks, saw some cars. We were catching up. I honestly didn't know what one of my good friends did for a living, but he filled me in on it. And he works in the plastics industry, right? And what he does, and a segment of his of this company does, is that they come up with, or they help you, if you come up with an idea, they do molds, they do like CNC and CAD work, and then they give you a mold of this, like a, like a, a product. Like, let's say I have an idea for whatever, you know, something you're going to use in the studio or something. Uh, I want to take it to market, but I need a mold of it so I can, you know, come up with a prototype and all that shit. Usually that takes a long time. Like, if you ever watch Shark Tank, half of the battle is like shipping your shit off overseas or wherever you ship it like waiting to get your prototype waiting to get your prototype back and then you know going back and forth with like edits and changes or whatever but obviously you can do it in america anyway this company does it he was like if you ever have an idea like let me know i can i can breeze through half of the process of getting you a mold or prototypes for for certain things i was like Thanks. do they do that here yeah yeah so the, we're right here right so here. the mold in-house yeah is in-house it's super not, local so nothing overseas yeah my soul be having ideas all the time. She's so, like, somebody need to invent a thing. I know. I brought this. it up to her yesterday. And she was like, yeah, I always think about things that, you know, for us, right now she keeps thinking about things for moms and pregnant people and stuff. So, oh, yeah. Um, my sister knows a couple that I don't know if, you, if you've ever seen it, <clears throat> but um, you know those little like rubber um, wristbands where yeah. it might be, you know, I think I used to make some with chingobling.com on there. Well, I think they got the idea from that, but basically they had a kid, like a toddler, and at daycare, all the sippy cups get mixed up, and it's like, wait, Timmy's cup, that ain't, whose cup is that? So they came up with a thing where, I guess, they sold a bunch of these with people's names on them. So now Timmy has there, they wrap it around the sippy cup, and everybody knows to look at the name. Anyway, this shit, like, blew up. It blew up. I don't know if they went, like, out the trunk, like, trade shows, like, Mike Lindell, My Pillow Style. State fairs, somehow, some way, it caught on, and the rest is history. What if we did a, like a Shark Tank show with the patrons? Like, if you're in the part of the TIA and you have like a, a business you want to pitch or a product you want to like have created and brought to market, might be an idea. Yeah. So if you guys, if you guys have anything, reach out to me at least, and maybe I can I can help you out, guide you in the right direction. But just thought I'd throw it out there. It's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> For sure, we'll think of something. But that's a good plug to have absolutely yeah manufacturing is a good thing to to know yes i honestly think about that a lot more especially after reading mike lindell's book and hearing steve bannon say stuff like you know we there's a lot to be said about american manufacturing i've mentioned like kanye had mentioned he's gonna make some of the shoes here and you know you want to keep you want you don't want to have to use slave labor in china for every fucking thing and that's why we sit here looking goofy with our supply chains because we done offshored our supply chain. We offshored all our manufacturing, medicines, everything is made over there. 90% of the shit in your house, 90% of the shit in Walmart. Um, not a lot of stuff gets made here. So, okay, here we are. Freedom, what is that? Freedom End? It's Industries is the name of the brand. Freedomind.com. Freedom, yeah, the website is Freedom Mind ID. Okay. This might be my new sneaker. Dude, okay. I they don't look bad, right? You know what? I fucks with them, Rob. I like them. At first, when you're like, hey, man, this, they're like American made. They got tennis shoes and shit instead of fucking with Nike. And I, I, I just picture like some ugly ass, stupid ass shoes. <laughs> I know. That's what I was I like, thought. Rob, don't nobody want no fucking American made, goofy ass shit. Dude, but look at their apparel, though, too. Like, shout out again, Hop Society on Instagram. Um, look at that. Yeah, I'm not mad at those. I'm not mad at that I, at all. I kind of like them. They look like Metcon 3s. A, a little, little bit. bit. I like that. I like this design. I like yeah, the hoodies. Wait till you see um, the Freedom Collection. Yeah, a little Freedom Collection. Shout out. I like this. I love the patch. Yeah, love that we, patchwork. We, we got them. Um, okay. All right. I like the camo jacket. I like all this shit. I like this. It's kind of like, I like hoods, but if you don't have a hood, that's Well, that's cool. a nice jacket. It's, it's a F-Tech zip hoodie jacket. $95. I like, that's a reasonable price. I like these pants. Um, now let me find out this shit's made in China, god damn it. I do need to do some research, but for my... Only because it's like, well shit, man, in time for Christmas. Yeah, right? I like these thermals. I it's, like it's cheaper than Lulu. It really I, is. I can't be mad at Lulu though. Dude, I like those. Having a little bit of Lulu on my little wish list. Okay, those are nice. I like it. This yeah. looks like some shit Rogan be wearing. He wears those like hunting shoes that kinda look like this a little bit. Almost like hiking shoes. Yes, right? hiking shoes. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got to be tactical. You know what I'm talking about? And there, there's sto- there aren't any stores in Houston, but there's one in Dallas. And then the, they have actual, these are in like some other retailers and not. I wonder Houston. how big this shit is going to blow up. Dude, they have uh, their Facebook page. They almost have a million people, I think, on Facebook and like a quarter million on Instagram. All, okay, we need to find out if it's made here. Yeah. But um, people like to support that kind of stuff, especially when you know that Nike's full of shit. They make cool stuff. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Nike, man, I'm fucking sore right now. <laughs> uh, Nike makes cool shit. I own a good amount of Nike, but um, I think that's it. I think that ship has sailed. In in my good conscience, in my 42 years of age, trying to be an example to my my kids, you got to stand for something. Um, Stop encouraging this. I'm not down with all that stuff Colin Kaepernick talking about. Talking about Steve Erko's racist. That's the white man telling us who. It sounds like such a con man race baiter. It's like, I'm going to. Pick out my afro, and I'm going to hop on TV and say, the NFL is like slave trade. Steve Urkel was only created because the white man wants to feel safer, and they want to tell, they want to tell us who's acceptable. Carlton from Fresh Prince is an acceptable Negro. Did you see this? Yeah, Tiki, uh, Tiki Gate. Um, okay, a lot of people are saying Lincoln Project just took the fall, like, that they didn't really have nothing to do with that because all these they look so fucking goofy. They're all Democrat they try, operatives. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The female. They're like hardcore, deep Democrat. Yeah. Like super in the cult, brainwashed. Yeah. And these fucking ugh, this organization already has no credibility. So sure, whatever. Just might as well just extinguish them out after this stupid hoax. They they a lot of them deleted their little pages. They even got a black guy. Yeah, they got Clayton Bigsby right to, there. To dress up like a, a weird neo-Nazi tiki torch Nazi. Which now I'm starting to think, was that even fucking real? <laughs> so so is this a video? Uh, probably. I didn't play it. So didn't. CNN is going to try to soften the blow nah, this and is cover awesome. for him? Because it says actually... CNN panel rips. Oh. Bizarre Lincoln Project hoax. Wait for this Amazon a ad A CNN panel decries... The Lincoln Project's viral white supremacist hoax in Virginia governor race and how it contributes to wider mistrust. It'll be interesting. Even if um, even if the Republicans don't win Virginia and it's even a little bit close, it's a pretty big blow because uh, Joe Breezy, I think, won Virginia by like 10 points. Allegedly. Allegedly. And uh, other, other seats were won by almost double digits as well. So if this is close, not good. The parents are mad. Education is about to be a big issue. <clears throat> I mean, wow. <laughs> such bizarre. I, you right? know, this is like, and it took a while no, for it to come out that it was the Lincoln Project, right? I mean, it was like no one. It seems like they do more damage than, you know, even though they're trying to actually help Democrats by, uh, you know, ridding the Republican Party of anyone who is, you know, who supported former President Trump. Uh, you know, they're trying to kind of eradicate Trumpism from the Republican Party, but Trumpism. I don't think the tactics always work. In fact, they often seem to backfire, but this is just part of a broader strategy in Virginia uh, to tie Yunkin to Trump, and he's tried to thread the needle, you know, distance himself from, from Trump while still sort of courting his supporters, and yeah. we'll see if that's effective on Tuesday. Yeah, it's just, it's mind-blowing, because this is a group that says they want a healthier Republican Party, uh, want to distance from Trumpism, as you just said, and yet they do something like this, and it's sort of that's crazy. why they're the ones that took the fall. That's why they're the ones that took the fall. They ain't got shit to say. That's a that's a terrible panel. These well, people would suck. <clears throat> well, the fact that the Lincoln Project took the claim, it allows CNN panel people to be like, these are some weird Republicans. That's what they get to do, <sighs> because the Lincoln Project, first of all, weren't they grooming little boys? Kids, yeah. They were like trying to get young interns like, hey, you want to get into politics? Yeah, come over here. So they were uh, trying to mess with little boys and they're like grifters. They're basically Republicans that are like more of the Liz Cheney variety. So uh, did you see this clip? Oh, yeah. Obviously a girl. just got to play it real quick for people. Uh, in case. What you doing? What you doing tomorrow? Tell everybody you know to vote tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing like saying you want to meet me tomorrow. What you, what you doing tomorrow? You got any plans tomorrow? Tomorrow's a good day. It's going to be a good day. But the point is... There's no point. This lady is the worst. You, know. this you ever see a comedian bomb where they try new material? 100%. This is it right here. This is open mic. <clears throat> That's open mic right there. Yeah. Uh, you, ain't nothing better than saying, how's tomorrow? What's the deal? What's what, tomorrow? What, what y'all doing tomorrow? You know what I'm talking about? How you could just be like, tomorrow, we going to go. When are we going? Tomorrow. 
she already thought oh, she's like, oh, that's gonna kill. <laughs> she's like, I went. To, she's like, I, I went to um, a black college in Atlanta. She's like, I could do this. She was in the mirror. She tried to take a, a page out of <clears throat> Seinfeld's note where he would he'd write out all of his lines. He'd leave the spaces blank for where he knew the laughs would be. He'd wait for the laughs. He'd keep going, and she knew she. That's how she thought it was gonna go. Um, cause ain't nothing like being able to say, <laughs> "How's tomorrow? <laughs> what you doing tomorrow?" We going to go tomorrow. But the thing about it is, and it's like, <laughs> people are like, are we supposed to clap at this? There's what, just no energy. What's going on here? And then here's another thing I want to mention about the CNN panel. <clears throat> They're trying to critique Youngkin. They're trying to make the whole takeaway. Like, he he's trying to court Trump supporters. Meanwhile, he's trying to distance himself from Trump supporters. I heard one commentator say... Yeah, he's trying to be uh, Trump in the sheets, but Mitt Romney in the streets, <laughs> or something like that. And they they like laughed, right? Because it was funny. But um, but they they keep trying to make it an issue about left or right, Republican, Democrat. It's not even about that. It's the parents are finding out what's going on with this educational system. Basically, bro, the state and the school board and the government, for all practical purposes, are straight up telling the parents to their face in not so many words. They say it different ways. Because they'll ask them, like in the debates and stuff, the governors, like, should parents be able to have some say on what they're teaching the kids? And basically they're like, yeah, no, not really. We have experts for that. And they're like, shouldn't parents play a role in deciding how we educate the kids? They're like, um, it's an important role, but, you know, it, it's, it's us. So you're a junior partner in the situation. Like, it's about the state. We, if we want to teach critical race theory, we're going to fucking teach critical race theory. If we want boys in skirts in the women's restroom raping them and us doing a cover up, then that's just what we're going to do. And you as a parent do not get informed. You don't have no say. And we're going to mask your kids, jab your kids. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. And you have no fucking say. And the parents are feeling disrespected. They're not having it, man. It's, it's not. The pendulum will indeed continue to swing in a better direction. We got some questions from the TIA here. Chingo, let's uh, read off four of them. So, um, somebody should ask George Lopez how many genders there are. <laughs> Just set them up. <laughs> Do, let's see how lefty he really is. Anyway. I don't think he'll ever answer questions like that. Well, right? yeah, he's probably smart enough not to, but it's like, that's the side you're on, buddy. Luis Gandara says, what is your level of faith of free and fair elections? On a one to ten. Ten being this shit is all rigged and will never win again. <clears throat> what do you say? Well, Luis says that he's at about a 6.5. That shit's rigged. Um, I think there's a lot of shenanigans. You got lawyers like Mark Elias that will go ahead, ahead of the curve. And they went and changed rules. Like, you can mail out a mail-out ballot to someone's house without, uh, without them having to prove, like, the last four digits of their social. Like... All the little checks and balances that other countries do, little bitty countries, Ukraine, I don't know who, where they're like, like Mexico, they have a voter ID. They're like, wait, in America, y'all don't have to show ID? Right. I might have to throw that in one of my jokes when I'm down there in Mexico telling the stuff about like, well, this is Mexico and we still have freedom of speech. It's <laughs> like, and we still have to show ID to vote. Um, yeah, man. I, I, hopefully it could be fixed. As of today. So as of today's November 2nd, 2021 how do you feel one ten <clears throat> it's gonna be very hard to fix i might be um i might be right in the middle like we're at a five dude i was gonna say that too we're at a five and i don't want to be pessimistic say we're at a 10 and there's just no coming back but with big tech doing its thing google doing its thing um them suppressing certain conversations uh with the media you know the corporate media is like they'll call you. You'll get called so many names if you dare <clears throat> question. But guess what? This regime is illegitimate. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. Yeah, and I think that's what, you know, big tech is shooting itself in the foot in a sense because all of this came out over the last year and a half. People are starting to find out the truth and either the people that know the truth and still choose to ignore it will forever vote blue for the rest of their life. And those that saw it, and are like, you maybe might have sold two years ago, you know, are like, oh shit, I've been being lied to, right? I can't take this anymore. I'm not going to ignore this. I'm going to do some research. That's how I think a lot of the people are going to end up going and then voting the other, the other way, giving the other side a chance and somewhere hopefully meeting back in the middle. 
<clears throat> like I voted for Obama the first time he ran. I think the second time by then the recession it just all left a bad taste. And by then I just wasn't as hypnotized. Like, okay, this dude's full of shit. But I think a lot of people that were maybe listening to Rush Limbaugh or whatever was out at the time, <clears throat> and they were like, Obama's a socialist. He's like like the birthing thing. Like, is he even from here? Where did this mm. motherfucker come from? Why is he so cool with all these radicals in Chicago and and why you know, so on and so forth? I feel like none of that really hit my radar at that time. But I look at 2021, 2020, and I'm thinking, okay, are any of y'all starting to snap out of it? Like, if you didn't snap out of it back then, like I didn't back in the Obama era, if you didn't snap out of it back then, if you didn't think Hillary, like, lock her up. Yeah. Later, once the thing about her emails and Benghazi and all that, I think slowly people are like, okay, these people are not angels. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect. But... After all the mandates and all the um, jab enforcement and vax passport and, and censorship, the, and it's just two weeks and it's, it's just this and it's just that and it's just this. I mean, are you at least starting to kind of question the matrix a little bit and be like, I think Don Lemon's full of shit. And uh, there's a video, maybe I'll pull it up on Friday's episode, where Obama goes, you know, they've already they've all been down there to Virginia to rally for the Democrat down there. And um, Obama's speech was essentially like, I know I lied to you. I mean, in a sense, not in not so many ways. Let me paraphrase. Like, I know, I know, I didn't, I didn't come through with my promises, you know, uh, back during my election. But uh, you know, but for this guy, you know, he's he's don't don't blame him for things I did. You know, essentially saying like I didn't do the things I said I was going to do. But this isn't me. This guy's going to do the things that he said he's going to do. It was a terrible like pitch <clears throat> for this guy. I used to be like, man, he's a good speaker. Now I'm like, bro, you sound so goofy. Yeah, every time Rogan says so that, goofy. I, it, annoys, it makes me cringe every time. He's like, yeah, he's a great speaker still. I mean, at the time, like, I mean, he's got technique. But now I see through the, and we're all her, 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 her. Motherfucker, you grew up in Malaysia, bro. <laughs> you volunteered in Chicago for about six months. All of a sudden. And her, 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 her. So now I just see him as a globalist, elitist, sellout. And... And he and and I really don't like when he's like, "This is just more Trump rhetoric. This is a uh, white rage. White rage. This is all like white conspiracy theory." First of all, your mama's white. Don't forget that, Barrick. Anyway, um, all right. Next question. Yeah. Uh, Brian out the north. What to do, Ching on Rob? What is your number one issue, and has y'all on red alert? <sighs> There's so many. There's a lot of them. Yeah, that's tough. There's so many, but. Well, this morning it was. Are they gonna collapse our power grid? <laughs> <clears throat> Six thirty in the morning. Rob, check this shit. Out. Oh yeah, that was a chingo chat conversation. Um, so many things, bro. Obviously, you have things coming down the horizon. Like, what's up with this educational system? What's up with transhumanism? What's up with the border? Yada yada yada. Obviously, some of the immediate stuff is kind of like rights and money. Like, what's up with the dollar? What's up with all the spending? Um, you know, cancel culture, culture war. I mean, is stand-up comedy going to be a thing? Like, are they going to start requiring, all right, all entertainers, if you want to be at these venues, or, hey, let's take a look at your tour. Half of these places are in these states, and they're going to start requiring your fans X, Y, Z. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to piggyback too much off you, but again, I would say for me, it was going to be uh, for censorship, probably number one, just because that is so dangerous on many levels, uh, not just online, but just in general, like mm -hmm. censorship from saying things uh, out in public, possibly, like are we going to turn in Canada where they don't have freedom of speech? But I think they had a case where they there was a big win for freedom of speech uh, recently in, in Canada, which I'll research and we can talk about on Friday. But uh, mandates and, and, and censorship, like those two things are very dangerous and they're being pushed hardcore by everybody that's in power in the left right now while they're in power because it's not going to be forever. It's probably going to be another 10 months at most or another year. Uh, but yeah, mandates and censorship, no bueno. <clears throat> and then being partisan, right? Um, now's not a good time to be so locked in with your like your side, your party mm -hmm. to where you look over bullshit. For example... This Kyle Rittenhouse thing, the I think the trial about to start, and there's already been some details like, can you call the people that he shot victims? Or you, are you not allowed to use that language? Can you call them rioters and looters? Because they were trying to blow up a gas station. Or like each side. <coughs> and here, here's my point. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's my point. My point is, some of these things are so polarizing. That is two movies on the same screen. One half of America is going to look at Lil Kyle. Be like, man, that's Lil Kyle, bro. He was down there trying to help and shit, having a little AK. His mama dropped him off 
at the state line or something or other. He was in Kenosha. And, you know, these people were chasing him. They were stalking him. They were hunting him down. He tried to go one way to police barricade. They were like, you got to go that way. So he's trying to escape these motherfuckers. He's trying everything in his power to get away. One tries to hit him over the head with a skateboard. They, they chase him. He falls. They surround him. One jumps on him. One has a gun. Bow, little cow, blew your hand off, blew your arm off. I think killed one dude and did what he had to do. The other half of the country is like, well, this is obviously Trumpism gone wild. <laughs> this is uh, the new age of uh, white ISIS, vanilla ISIS. This is a domestic terrorist who shot poor little innocent Antifa. <clears throat> you know, they're anti-fascist. So th- this was a fascist. Sorry, Discord's popping off right now. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be an interesting case. And one judge already did say that you can't call them uh, victims. victims. They're, they were right. Because if, if anything, he was about to be a victim. Exactly. So, Next question. All right, Gene Lopez on the uh, on the Patreon app asks, how do you see the swing back unfolding? Do you think they'll just take their foot off the pedal or will it be taken by force? Or do you think America's too far gone that it will only get worse? How do you see the swing back unfolding? Well, the Virginia race to me is very interesting. I've been keeping an eye on it just because like, <clears throat> like how is it possible that there's a law, legal loophole, where the school has the right to um, alert the parents or the authorities. How? How'd they get away with that? Oh, it's because of the uh, school-to-prison pipeline. They want to keep their incident numbers low. That led to Park City, uh, Parkland, Florida, Mm -hmm. with the shooting. They Mm -hmm. already had warnings about this kid. But because of this school-to-prison pipeline thing, the school then has the authority to not report incidents. Fast forward crazy motherfucker comes shoots up half the school when you had a chance to prevent it how did i get on that subject okay swing back the virginia race we're already seeing people start to be like hey man it ain't about democrat or you you trying to you trying to persuade me talking about oh this guy's another trumper well he just hopped on tv and said hey i'm not gonna mask your kids i'm getting critical race theory i'm banning all this shit and we're gonna be a little bit more like florida texas and tennessee stick to the math and the science we have to compete they're miseducating the kids what is all this pronoun nonsense we're not gonna be turn virginia into california okay well the parents are like Sorry, Democratic Party. I've identified with y'all. I voted for y'all. But I'm not going to stand with somebody that's going to cover up a rape in a school and thinks it's okay to have trans little boys in a skirt going in the women's restroom. So I, I feel like that's the canary in the cage. That's how you can watch the swing back. Now, if they steal that election, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. So that's very reasonable of you to say. Very good. Like, very well said. And if people just kind of interpreted everything through the, that lens, it's pretty, like, you were very even-keeled about what you said. I think parents are trying to be that way right now with what's going on. But when push comes to shove, there's no way that they're going to not turn their back on really shitty, uncommon sense, you know, whatever you want to call them. Like, they're not laws. What are they? Um, break, not, they're hypnotized. Yeah, yeah I guess. They I got TDS. They think all Republicans are racist, and they think that critical race theory is good. It's just showing history of, ra- of slavery. Um, I remember some old episodes, Rob, that you and I did where we were on there saying, um, your ki- I was saying, your kid's about to be dumb as a motherfucker. I remember that. Because the, <clears throat> the rich parents are going to have tutors and homeschool and private school, and they're not going to have to worry about none of this crap. I was like... um, they, your kids are getting set back. The Zoom school is not as good for a lot of kids. And the teachers' unions care about the teachers, not the students. And we talked about all this. And now it's culminating into when I was just like, they can't even give you a straight answer. They can't even get on TV and tell you, all right, okay, COVID's a thing, but we're starting to make the decision that it's, it's going to be more harmful, keep these kids at home, and COVID don't affect them like that, and yada, 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 yada. Dude, I forgot about that. Arguably, we were saying that before Bannon was saying it. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Uh, no L. Fedez. What do you feel about Kamala taking over once Biden shits the bed? Literally. <laughs> um, you first. Uh, so there's a way to impeach any official. You know, the VP is not exempt from that. Um, she's already the most unpopular VP in history. They don't like her more than they like him if you know whoever's left in there that likes him or even the people like you know congress people in general the administration a lot of people don't like them both but she's got no popularity whatsoever and i feel that if that did if it did come to that there'll be a way that 
the powers that be that don't like her will try to get her out, and the powers that be that do like her are going to try to make her seem like the darling of the White House. Or will she be a puppet? What's the media going to do? I think it's it's so interesting of an outcome that if we're really living in a simulation, like if this is season four of, of Trump, like Brent, um, Shapiro be saying, the writing is going to get really good. I can't wait for that season finale where they where they push this cadaver over the finish line. Like you got this 86 car uh, motorcade wheeling this cadaver around, right? This puppet. Yeah. This feckless, <laughs> illegitimate leader. They, 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 this little weekend at Bernie's, weekend at Brandon's. Um, I can't wait to see what excuse they use, how they're going to do it, what type of shit is Kamala going to try to usher in for the globalists and the World Economic Forum, how much many more of your rights are going to get taken away, uh, how much more good news and good podcast episodes we're going to have. Like, <laughs> like, did you see what Kamala did? There's already uh, Jack Posobiec, follow him on Twitter. <clears throat> he talks a lot about the shade war going on behind the scenes because mm. he has contacts at the White House. So basically, Team Kamala and her staff they call the Biden team and Jill, they call them the Titanic. There you like, go. Meaning there. like it's a sinking ship. Like she stopped attending events with him. It used to be Biden Harris, Biden Harris to just Biden. And then there go Harris <laughs> <laughs> doing her own thing. Uh, basically prepping, trying to be more like leaderly, if you will. Pfft. So um, what a shit show. Yeah, it's going to be a shit show because she doesn't seem very competent to me. Obviously, her track record, Tulsi Gabbard exposed her. Uh, she like was at 1% one, 1 approval, dropped out of the primaries before it, her state, Super early. Before her state even had a chance to vote. Harris had to drop out. Obviously, there's stuff about her past. She used to date Montel Jordan and Mayor Willie Brown, help, arguably helped her career, whatever. But like, she ain't really black. She's half Jamaican, so she's Caribbean and Indian. She she lied about Kwanzaa, talking about, oh, yeah, we grew up celebrating Kwanzaa all the time. And it's like, the shit was brand new when you were a kid. You grew up in Canada. You know, you was out there in Montreal or some shit, talking about with, with your Indian family. All y'all were Indian as fuck. Like Red Dot Indian. Yeah, like with the whole everything. You had beating the dole drum, <laughs> eating curry. All of a sudden, you, um, what you doing tomorrow? Okay, yeah, uh-huh, can I get some tomorrow? Okay, we gonna watch the Cal and Kaepernick tomorrow. There's too many bad idea guys, too, too many bad ideas, guys, to not have fun with what's going on. Uh, so Chingo's got to promise me to like keep his uh, blood pressure under control. Okay. While while we go into the potential possible, you know, Kamala administration. I'm looking forward to it. I'm strapped in. It's like a roller coaster ride. I'm just gonna be like, yeah, fuck it. Let's enjoy the fucking the collapse. So before we go, I was going to wait till Friday, but I kind of want to play some of this video. Did you see uh, Senator Cruz grill the TikTok official? Let's see it. Okay, let's play a little bit of this, and then we'll go out on that, and we'll see you guys. We've been doing some extended episodes. We we this is like a new flow to the show where you just like it's it's so good. There's so much to talk about, and I think things are you know. Yeah, man, you got to cut me off. No, 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 no. I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, because we got some other shit to film. Yeah, and, yeah. and I leave tomorrow morning. You're right. You're right. Well, <clears> yeah. So this week we're not recording on Thursday because you're gonna come back and oh, hit shit. the studio. So we're gonna do it Friday early if before the okay. Friday shows. Perfect. As soon as you can. Perfect. Yeah. He said. All right. So. This guy here is a TikTok official, and uh, Cruz is, is talking about the CCP and the Byte company. So Byte is like China's version, if I'm not mistaken, right, of uh, TikTok? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Beckerman, thank you for being here today. I understand this is the first time that TikTok is testifying before Congress, and I appreciate you making the company available to finally answer some questions. In your testimony, you talked about all the things you say TikTok is doing to protect kids online, and that's great. But I want to discuss the broader issue here, which is the control the Chinese Communist Party has over TikTok. Its parent company, ByteDance, and its sister companies like Beijing ByteDance Technology. Now, TikTok has stated repeatedly that it doesn't share the data it collects from Americans with the Chinese Communist Party, and that it wouldn't do so if asked. It is also stated that, with regards to data collected on and from Americans, that data is stored in Virginia with a backup in Singapore. But these denials may, in fact, be misleading. Mm -hmm. A quick look at TikTok's privacy policy, in fact, just last night, shows there's a lot more than meets the eyes. For example, in the, quote, how we share your information section, one blurb reads, quote, 
we may share all of the information we collect with a parent, subsidiary, or other affiliate of our corporate group. Interestingly, in June of this year, the privacy policy was updated to state that TikTok, quote, may collect biometric identifiers and biometric information as defined under U.S. laws, such as face prints and voice prints. <laughs> Mr. Beckerman, does TikTok consider ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, which is headquartered in Beijing, to be a part of qu TikTok's, quote, corporate group, as that term is used in your privacy policy? Um, thank you, Senator. Um, this is an important question. I'd, I'd just like to take an opportunity first to clear up misconceptions um, around um, some of the accusations that have been um, leveled against the company. Um, I would like to point to independent research. I understand that trust but, needs to be earned. Mr. Beckerman, I, I get you may have broader points you want to make. My, my question is simple and straightforward. Does TikTok consider ByteDance, the parrot company headquartered in Beijing, to be part of TikTok's corporate group? That's, that's a yes or no. Senator, access controls for our data is done by our U.S. teams. Um, and as independent researchers, independent experts have pointed out, the data that TikTok has on the app is not of a national security importance and is of low sensitivity. But again, we do hold that to a high standard and we have access control. Okay, Mr. Beckman, we're going to try a third time <laughs> be, because the words that came out of your mouth have no relation to the question you were asked. Your privacy policy says you will share information with your corporate group. I'm asking a very simple question. Is ByteDance, your parent company, headquartered in Beijing, part of your corporate group? Yes or no, as you use the term in your privacy policy. Senator, um, I, I think it's important that I address the broader point in, in, your, in your statement. So are you willing to answer the question, yes or no? It is a yes or no question. Are they part of your corporate group or not? Yes, Senator, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, so under your privacy policy, you're explicitly <laughs> stating that you may be sharing data with them, including biometric identifiers, including face prints, including voice prints. Is that correct? Uh, no, no, Senator. In the privacy policy, it says that if we are to collect um, biometric information, which we do not um, collect biometric data to identify Americans, um, we would uh, provide consent and opportunity for consent first. But you also say we may share all of the information we collect with a parent subsidiary or other affiliate of our corporate group, which means with ByteDance head headquartered in Beijing, correct? Under U.S. access control, sir. All right, secondly, what about Beijing ByteDance technology, which media reports from earlier this year showed Beijing took a minority stake in through a state-banked internet investment Chinese entity, and on the board of which now sits Wu Shengang, a CCP official who spent most of his career in Chinese propaganda, including with a stint at the Online Opinion Bureau under the Cyberspace Administration of China, China's internet regulator. Would you consider Beijing ByteDance technology to be a part of TikTok's corporate group with whom TikTok could share all of the information it collects. Senator, um, I want to be clear that that entity has no affiliation with TikTok. Um, it's based for um, domestic licenses of the business um, in China that has, is not affiliated or connected to TikTok. So are you saying no or, or yes or no as to whether Beijing ByteDance technology is part of your corporate group as the privacy policy defines it. It says we may share all of the information we collect with a parent, subsidiary, or other affiliate, and presumably that's where it would fall, other affiliate of our corporate group. Is Beijing ByteDance Technology a, quote, other affiliate of your corporate group? Um, Senator, I'm saying that entity deals with domestic businesses within China. <laughs> it's not okay, connected okay, you're, with you're having a hard time. You're answering questions I'm not asking. So this goes on for another yeah. like four minutes or so, right? So he's talked about those licenses to, to run the business or whatever. In order to operate that business, you need to have that license from the person on that board. Mm -hmm. Meaning he could, I mean, he already incriminated himself in, in the sense by lying to Congress there. But anyway, you need the license. You need the, you need the, be the, have the in, the, the person's on the board. Where do you get the license? Who lets you run the business in, in China or in the, you know, through the CCP? It's like somebody from the CCP. So isn't it called Article 6 where Beijing CCP could just summon whatever information from whatever company in their country? 
Uh, AKA Byte Dance. Yeah, or Tesla, for instance. There's a lot of uh, Tesla <laughs> news that doesn't get covered, but that's Or yeah, or even the Apple app store in China, they, they made them kick off Muslim and Christian apps. Mm. Didn't know that. Yes, Christians are persecuted. Um, yeah, crazy times. Well, regardless of what you think about Cancun Cruise, when it was freezing, <laughs> when it was freezing and he booked a flight to Cancun... You got to give him some credit for being a lawyer yeah. and, and cornering this dude saying, okay, but doesn't it state, is that not part of your parent company? Because you just finished telling me in your privacy thing, this is just the merger, the merger of big tech, AI, and governments, you know, with a layer of propaganda, censorship, and culture war all mixed into this soup where it's just like, you could get shadow banned. I mean, you could get labeled a domestic terrorist. We could just call you QAnon. We could just throw you in the gulag. I mean, it's just so many things. Um, and not to mention, like, wait, your whole face print, your voice print, your biometrics are getting shipped to China. What can they do with that? Use your imagination. Westworld. I don't know. Use your imagination. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. Speaking of my blood pressure, uh, yeah, man, Houston Improv all weekend long, all weekend long. Thank you, Irvine, or is that or tonight? That's tonight. Uh, okay. tonight. Okay, tonight, Irvine Improv, California Love. That was a hell of an episode. Uh, let's keep an eye on all these things: Metaverse, Colin Kaepernick, Virginia. I mean, this shit that was amazing. The the tech thing at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Eye opening. For sure, we're going to knock out some videos for y'all, man. Uh, appreciate the love. Spread the word. Share the clips. Be a force multiplier. That way we can break past the censors. Join the newsletter. Join the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill If you feel that these types of conversations are important, you want to support us, you want to protect our free speech with this type of business model, get behind the paywall. Get all the premium content, the Chingo Chats, multiple episodes per week. And thank you guys for being the best part of this movement. Peace. Sass.